At this point in time, the Philippines beckons to the world to invite the stranger to consider and recognize not a geographic expression, but a national identity. This presentation focuses on the music, the costumes, the central episodes of history, and creates an impact which few history books can achieve. the Philippines became embroiled in the Seven Years' War of 1762. With Great Britain's declaration of war against France and her allies, came the quick attack of British India against Manila. The British squadron entered Manila Bay and caught the city off guard. Defending forces fled across the Pasig River, and the invading troops pillaged and sacked the city in what was the first successful invasion after Spanish conquest. British rule and occupation in the Philippines was brief, lasting only two years. It was a minor episode in a great war in Europe, but it bore special significance for the history of the Philippines. The years 1521 to 1872 gave rise to the long line of heroes who began the arduous process of learning what it means to become a free nation. The men and women who blazed through their deeds and their thoughts and their writings, the crucial questions that a people must face. In the northern provinces, Diego Silao seized the opportunity to free his people from the yoke of Spanish rule, and without reference to the British, spread his rebellion through the countryside. When he died from an assassin's bullet, his wife Gabriela took over the struggle for the strength of British troops soon overwhelmed the rebellion. The peace treaty which ended the Seven Years' War provided for the restoration of the Philippines to Spain. But the flame was lit. The national struggle for freedom and autonomy had begun. The liberal ideas of Europe's enlightened period gave shape to the growth of national consciousness. Slowly, Filipinos realized the common grievance which united regional groups into one, the common grievance of the subject people. The colonial experience which itself served to create one nation, one fatherland. The leaders of the revolution themselves, rugged individualists, fostered different paths for the struggle. The young warehouse worker Andres Bonifacio believed that the time was ripe for recourse to arms to right the wrongs suffered by his countrymen. To do this, he formed the Katipunan, a secret society which rallied together young recruits and the peasantry of Luzon to the cause of revolution. On August 26, 1896, he led the cry of revolt in Balintawak, which ended irrevocably the peaceful campaign for freedom. Others saw the same deteriorating situation but took an essentially reformist view. The propaganda movement, which they began as exiles in Spain, called for the introduction of reforms by the Spanish colonial government. José Rizal, who rose as the foremost Philippine national hero, called for a period of learning and discipline for his people, to learn to work together, to unify their means, their purposes, and their ends. He was convinced that the move to armed rebellion at that time was disastrous. Instead, he inspired his countrymen to the cause of education, that by means of instruction and hard work, they may acquire a personality of their own, worthy of the liberties they demanded. Condemned to death by Spanish authorities, Rizal was shot by a firing squad in Bagumbayan on December 30th, 1896. His execution sparked the people's resentment, and the revolution spread like wildfire. On June 12, 1896, the Philippine Revolutionary Government, under General Emilio Aguinaldo, declared its independence from Spain in Cavit Cavite. For the first time, the Philippine National Anthem was sung, and the Philippine National Flag unfurled. In 
their proclamation, Aguinaldo expressed his confidence that his people who had proven themselves so enduring and valiant in times of adversity cannot remain slaves forever. Such a people must be called to greatness, to take its own place at last in the great assembly of free nations. Meanwhile, across the Pacific, the Spanish-American War broke out. On May 1st, 1898, Commodore George Dewey destroyed the Spanish fleet anchored at Manila Bay. When the smoke of battle had cleared, Filipinos found only a change of masters. American victory laid the terms of the Treaty of Paris and Spain ceded the Philippines to the United States. For Filipinos, this intervention seized the freedom which was so close at hand. Filipinos refused to consider the Spanish session valid. In 1899, an assembly of Filipino leaders gathered in Malolos, a town outside of Manila, to write a constitution of the Philippine Republic. The document spoke well of their ideas for peaceful and orderly government. But the Republic was short-lived. In their battle against American soldiers, Filipino troops found they were no match for the formidable enemy. The Filipino-American War was a record of bitter defeat and in the end, painful surrender. But there were moments of glory for the men who laid their lives for the land. General Gregorio del Pilar at Tirad Pass and the guerrilla fighters in the unnamed foothills of war. Filipinos began once again a period of tutelage, now in the republican institutions of American democracy. The new colonial power expressed sympathy for national aspirations and made solemn commitment to grant independence as soon as the Filipino people could demonstrate their capability for stable government. The tidings McDuffie Act of 1934 provided for an election of a constitutional convention which would frame the constitution of the young republic. Complete independence would be granted in 1946. But the interim period gave the Philippines the status of commonwealth and self-government under Manuel L. Quezon as president. A charismatic leader, Quezon captured the love and adulation of his countrymen. His era was evocative of his fiery and flamboyant style. But it was a time of hard work, and the Commonwealth leaders laid the groundwork on which would stand the future Republic of the Philippines. Providentially, these leaders gave first priority to national defense. Sooner than anyone thought, one more long ordeal was to begin. The Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor on Sunday, December the 7th, 1941. That same day, Japanese planes bombed Clark Field, north of Manila. Japanese troops landed in both northern and southern Luzon. The retreat of Filipino and American troops under the command of General Douglas MacArthur brought them to their last stand. Bataan and the island fortress of Corredor have become symbols for the bravery of both Filipinos and Americans who fought against the march of Japanese forces. The defense of Bataan and Corredor upset the Japanese military operations in the Far East and halted Japan's thrust towards Australia. It was decided that President Quezon would leave the country to carry on the government in exile in the United States. On October 14, 1943, José P. Laurel was appointed President of the Republic inaugurated by the Japanese military organization. He faced the difficult and painful task of maintaining law and order. For the sake of the civilian population, he had to come to terms with the enemy occupation. Manila, as an occupied city, suffered destruction second only to that of Warsaw. All over the countryside, the cruel hand of war brought death and destruction. 
After a recurring illness, President Quezon died in the United States. In his message to the Filipino people, the new president, Sergio Osmeña Sr., praised the heroic resistance of his people. After the fall of Bataan and Corredor, the guerrillas continued to fight against the invaders. Without arms, hungry and unclothed, they gave battle to the enemy from every nook and corner of the land. On October 20th, 1944, American Liberation Forces landed in Leyte. General Douglas MacArthur fulfilled his historic promise to return. General Carlos Romulo, who later presided over the August Assembly of the United Nations, shared the peril and the pride of the occasion. MacArthur urged the Filipino people to draw on the indomitable spirit of Bataan and Corredor to renew their strength. For the tasks that lay before them, the Filipino people needed every ounce of will and determination. Liberation was at hand, but it was a time to rebuild on the ashes of war, to come together in the aftermath of so terrible a destruction. The process of rehabilitation might have been as much an ordeal as the long years of fighting. In the end, who could find the will and the strength to carry on the unfinished business of nation-building? The long and painful quest for national sovereignty ended in the morning of July 4th, 1946. Over the ruins of a war-torn land, the Filipino people raised their flag, brave symbol of an independent republic of the Philippines. 